Welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's video we shall set up some functionality for our equipment but in this video we're not going to be really able to equip anything yet uh, but we're going to set up all the functionality we need so that we can do so in the next video. Also I recorded this video twice but uh, the video got corrupted so I had to redo it and there is a part where I've already done something but I'm going to explain everything that I've done and it only consists of deleting some nodes and uh, yeah, it's actually quite simple so I think there should be no issues. So let's begin shall we? The first thing that we need is the actual actor that we can equip on top of our character so let's go to our inventory folder, let's create a new folder called this equipment inside of here let's add a new blueprint class and I'm gonna use the static mesh actor class and this is gonna be my equip vest vest there we go now for the static mesh I'm gonna select my vest here it is and what I want to make sure of is that this thing right here is movable because well we are going to be moving with our character and we need this thing to move with us. One more thing that we want to do is scroll down till the collision and I want to overlap all to make sure that my character does not collide with this and also so that the camera does not collide with this actor right here. And uh, also one more thing to keep in mind is depending on your line trace it gets shoot from the camera forward it might go through your character so perhaps you should check also uh, maybe set this to custom and ignore the visibility channel as well uh, so just for just for, just to be safe I'm gonna ignore this as well so that the line trace does not collide uh, with this uh, piece of equipment. And of course if you are using a different trace channel, which I strongly recommend you do, uh, then ignore that one instead of the visibility. So that's it for this actor right here. Now let's see, the next thing what we should probably do is, um, well first let's align this with the character. So to do so we need to find our character skeletal mesh. There is our skeletal and I'm gonna add a socket to the spine 2 bone in my case. So add socket and I'm gonna rename this socket to be called armor. Uh, I'm not gonna give this a name of uh, like armor socket like we did with the backpack because in our inventory structure type I'm gonna give this a new variable and it's gonna be called type and uh, I'm gonna give the type armor so I will not have to type in the socket's name and I will retrieve it directly from the uh, item information. So now let's for the testing purposes only go to our character and over here let's do a begin play event begin play there we go and on begin play let's actually spawn our actor from class which is our newly created equip a vest let's split the transform pin and then let's attach actor to component and of course this spawned actor is the target and the parent is going to be our mesh and for now I'm gonna type in over here armor uh, because well I don't have any inputs from uh, outputs from over here but I will retrieve those later once we have items in our equipment so with this being done I already know we are gonna have a couple of issues probably it's not gonna fit nice oh and it's actually sideways so um, obviously all of our items are gonna be sideways so what we can do is go back to our skeletal and select the socket and we can rotate this 90 degrees I believe this direction should be fine so now it's in the correct rotation but it is a little bit uh, too, too, too much to the back so what we can do is go to our equip vest and over here we can adjust this but the issue is since this is a parent we're not really able to adjust this so what I want to do is duplicate this and simply remove the mesh from the parent one and now I can adjust the child so let's see this one is a little bit too much forward uh, backwards I mean so let's go forward it still has the same collision rules and it's still movable so that's great now let's try this again and I feel like this is way better than it was before so you might have to adjust this to your likings uh, for me for now this is gonna be good enough now let's work on the item properties. Let's go to our inventory 
as inventory structure and here I want to add two variables so the first one like I said is gonna be the type and this one I'm gonna change to be let's say like a string should be good enough let's move this up and I want to add another variable and I'm gonna call this actor class and this one is going to be the actor type, but it's not going to be the object reference. This is going to be a class reference so that we can select our um, equip vest uh, blueprint. So now let's go to our items database and I've already added this item to the database, but I haven't filled in these newly created variables. So for the type, I'm going to type in armor since that's what I called my socket. And for the actor class, of course, I'm going to select my equip vest. There we go. So now that's good enough. Now, the next thing that I want to do is optimize our um, on drop events. And to do so, let's create all the necessary things we need for our equipment. And the first thing, of course, is the equipment variable, which is going to hold all of our equipment, which is the S slot structure type and an array, just like uh, player slots. And the next thing would be we have this remove amount at index function. We need a exact same function for our equipment. So what I will actually do is simply connect this array right here to the input. So this creates us an array input. Let's leave the name be array. And I will remove these player slot things and connect the array directly where was the player slots. So now this will allow us to reuse this function with different types of uh, arrays and basically both of these that we have here. So the next step that I want to do is we have also this add item to player slot function and I want to duplicate this one for our equipment. So what I will do is duplicate this and add item to equipment that's going to be name of this function right here and this function is going to be just a little bit different so what i will do here is do a switch on integer and the integer is going to be the local variable local index because in my equipment i'm going to have um so let's add entries to this actually. And so the zero index is going to be for my armor. Then I'm going to have something that's going to be attached to my, let's say like an arm and something that's going to be attached to my leg. So for now, since we have only three uh, entries to the equipment array, I'm going to add three entries to this switch and I'm going to add a local variable and I'm going to call this local slot type. And let's make this into a string and a single variable. And let's set this variable on every single one of these switch exits. So now the first one is going to be, let's say, armor. Then we're going to have an arm and then let's say leg. Now, the next thing what I want to do is check if this type uh, is equal to the one that our item has. So I will do some small changes over here. I want to move this piece out. So let's see, let's move this out. Let's reconnect uh, this false to this branch right here. So we can disconnect both of these and delete this node right here. Um, I'm going to leave this here. Then I'm going to move all of this back to over here to do this, uh, to retrieve the item information from the database before we do the switch so reconnect this like so and then we can connect the return node false right here on this one so these routes over here look pretty weird so to make these a bit shorter what we can do is drag in the local item right here split it and connect the amount so this one on the bottom like so and also let me do some small rerouting of these values right here. There we go. Now the next thing what I want to do is break this outro to get the information of our item over here. And I want to check if the item type is equal to our slot type. So let's connect the local slot type over here. Then from here we can do a if branch and connect all of these to this branch. There we go. And then from this branch on true, we can proceed with the function. Let's disconnect the default. And for the default, again, let's add the failed 
return and also from this false let's do the same thing now this function is all set up so now let's create the actual function that will allow us to optimize the drop events so let's create a new function let's call this move item and this function right here is going to have quite a few inputs the first one is going to be called item and this is our s slots structure type then we're going to have a source which is going to be a string so this is going to represent where is the item coming from and also we need a direction which is going to represent where the item is heading to also we need the item index which is an integer and also we need the slot index and what I'm gonna do to make routes shorter is promote all of these inside of this function to be local variables so local item and etc so now that I have promoted all of these to local variables from from here we can do a switch on string and for the selection let's use our local direction then I'm going to add three pins since we're going to have three sources uh, and three directions where the, the items are going to come and go to. The first one is going to be the inventory and the second one I'm going to call player. Previously I called this equipment but since you guys gave me quite a few uh, suggestions on what you want to see in this series uh, we need to... Uh, well we need to change some things in order to make things work. So this is going to be the player and the last one is going to be the equip meant now over here what we can do is from the inventory route we can add our equip backpack and we can try to add item add item and for the item itself this is the local item and this can go in the inventory and then we can do a if branch check to see if we were successful to add an item then from the player let's drag in our add item to player slot the item is again the local item and the index is local slot index, like so. Now for the equipment, let's drag in our add item to equipment, connect it like so. And for this one, we can use the same variables. So the local item and the local slot index. Now on both of these, again, let's do an if branch check to see if we were successful with adding an item and then if we are then we can do another switch I'm just gonna simply copy this one since it already has uh, all the routes that we need so on true and for this one we shall use the local source to know where to remove the item from so for the inventory route again let's drag in our equip backpack and let's remove amount at index so the inventory the index is the local item index and the amount let's drag in our local item and let's split this one to get the amount now for the player let's simply remove amount at index let's use the same index and the same amount and for the ri let's connect our player slots now for the equipment let's drag in one more time the remove amount at index connect this one connect the index connect the amount but for the RI let's connect our equipment and once we are done we can return and we need to have an output uh, just in case this might come in handy let's call this success just like previously and let's return true since we were successful with moving our items now let's find all the extra execution pins that we have over here and let's return false from them so return false from this one from the default switch pin from this one as well and on all of these falses that we have right here so now we need to make quite a few changes and actually I was recording this video previously but unfortunately the video got corrupted and some of the things I already have done but uh, let me show you what's, uh, what I've done. So simply I've removed just about everything from the on drop function as you can see right here. Only things that are left is casting to a drag drop item operation, getting its variables, then we are casting directly to the third person character and as this third person character we can simply move item like so. Then we can connect this to refresh inventory widget and connect all the pins. So the item is this one, the source is the tag and direction. In this case, since this is the player slot widget, then we can type in player. 
Also, let's connect the index to item index and slot index to slot index. And also, one more thing that's very important is that in our on drag detected, here in the tag, previously we had equipment. Make sure you type in player because these are the player slots and it's no longer going to be our equipment. Now, since we have done this one, let's go to our inventory panel where we have another on drop event. And over here, again, I've simply removed everything and just like in the previous function, we can directly run our move item function like so and connect all the pins. So item source direction is the inventory and the index is this index right here. For the slot index, I'm not using any in my uh, backpack, but if you want, of course, you can pass it along. There we go, so that's done. And one last thing that we should probably fix is our Dropbox, because as of right now, you can see if we go in here, it gives us an error over here, since it does not really understand what's going on. So what I wanna do here is, let's move this out of the way a little bit. Let's move this perhaps a little bit forward. And let's duplicate these nodes once more, like so. Let's add another pin to this. Let's move it up a little bit. And let's call this player. And for the equipment, let's go to the bottom one. And for the player, let's go to this one. Then let's reconnect the target to the third person character. Index to the index that we are getting from the drag drop operation. And the amount also is from the item that we get from the drag drop operation. And for the RIs, so this is the player RI, so we shall, as the third person character, let's get the player slot, connect that one right here, and also let's get the equipment RI and connect it to the bottom one. So this is looking very terrible, so let's just, uh, let me just reroute this real quick. So this didn't change much, but at least at least something. So compile and save this, and now this should work properly. And now last thing that we need to do is connect this true route to our spawn pickup master, and on false, let's return. There we go. So now let's test this whole thing out, and now let's see if this still works. So now let's see, drag the item, drag another item, move it over here. So this seems to be working just fine. Let's try to drop it. It did drop. Let's drop this one and everything seems to be working just like it did previously but now it's a little bit more optimized so that's gonna be it for today's video thank you guys for watching if you like my content make sure you subscribe and join my discord channel also if you want to support me financially you can do that by subscribing to my patreon and that would help me upload more frequently so yeah thank you guys and see you in the next video